everybody. Let's play a little intro song while people come in. Grateful I'm alive. It's all I can do just to not feel blue. In a flash I can see there's a tapestry and it lives underneath. Grateful I'm alive. One more day and it's still brand new In a flash I can see there's a tapestry And it lives underneath Grateful I'm alive When the rain came It poured on my head like a gutter drain And it pushed me down to the muddy ground water all around and the sun dried me out and I hung in the clouds and I couldn't get down so I changed my name played my music loud and then the sky revealed why grateful I'm alive well I'm not known to stay in I won't take for granted being here with you Through war and peace and in between I'm grateful I'm alive It's all I can do just to not feel blue In a flash I can see there's a tapestry What the day brought I was torn from my roots Oh, I was feeling lost And it threw me down To the muddy ground With the seed growing out And I suddenly sprouted I was new to the town Spitting dirt from my mouth When I cleaned up, I was looking for luck and then the ground revealed why grateful I'm alive well I'm not known for staying clear from harm I guess but now I'm amazed that I'm alright so I won't take Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy Saturday. <clears throat> What's new with you? So, um, 
hope everyone's doing well and uh, wanted to hop on for a live stream to teach a little bit about arpeggios. So, Omar, two plus two equals nine. All right. Sounds like a Radiohead song. So I wanted to hop on and teach a little bit, a little bit about arpeggios, and and how to play them, how to think about them, and then how to, um, well, not how to, but why they're important, right? Why they're crucial. Um, and arpeggios are one of those things that you're kind of already doing without knowing, if that makes sense. Meaning, if you're playing chord progressions, if you're playing chords. Um, you really have the skills to already play arpeggios if you just think about maybe playing chords one note at a time. So let's just dive right in. Um, you know, there's a lot to cover and uh, we'll, we'll kind of try our best to make it clear. And my goal with these live streams is to, you know, give you some homework, give you some things to think about because really these things, um, you know, there's too much to cover in, in one hour or one half hour or however long this live stream will be. But there's plenty to work on for months to come, right? So if I can just give you some things to work on, that would be my goal. Um, so where you want to start is generally you want to start with the chords you already know and understanding, you know, that we don't have to play them as polyphonic chords or chords where everything is just all at once, right? If I play a C major chord, I'm playing a bunch of notes at once. But if I pick that apart, I can start to see how I can play single notes from this chord in an arpeggio manner. And I can play chord tones. Right? So that would be just one string at a time. 5th, 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. And actually, it's a great right hand warm up. If you want to practice alternate picking with your pick, you would go down, up, down, up, down, right? Every other one is called alternate picking. And you can practice that with arpeggios. So I'm basically playing one note at a time of a C major chord. Great warm up. Back to C. See? So here's a C major bar chord in the E shape. And if I just play the first four strings, I can do a little right hand warm up on an arpeggio. I mean, I need to do this more often. It's just such a good technique building exercise because really we want to play, we want to play um, quickly with the right hand, but we don't necessarily need to, to be going crazy with the left hand. So if you just hold a chord, you can work your right hand. And maybe that's a good place to start is just to realize, take a chord you already know, play one note at a time, whether it's a C chord do alternate picking down up down up and just basically let your left hand chill you know and, and, and work that right hand you do that for 10 minutes imagine if you do that for 10 minutes how much better your technique would be you could put on a metronome which is what I recommend as well okay so, hello everybody, say, uh, feel free to say hi. Nice to see you, uh, Sash. And um, hit, the, hit the thumbs up, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, so let's break down arpeggios, all right? Let's just dive on in and I'm gonna be playing some songs as we go. Um, arpeggios are basically um, chords broken up into single notes. So, what is a chord? Let's just figure that out. It's a 
Hey, George. All right, George. George uh, joined at the very end of the last stream. And and uh, now now you're here. Hello. All right, funny. Funny Manric 2. All right, so um, let's just break down an arpeggio in terms of, you know, we're playing a chord note by note. So if you have a chord, you have a 1, 3, 5 in terms of the scale degrees. So if I have a C major, 1, 3, 5. Then 1, 3. And if I, if I play an arpeggio, what I'm doing is instead of playing the chord all at once, I'm playing one note at a time. One, three, five, one, three. Now, if I play an arpeggio, I have the luxury of having one string at a time. So, is there a note that I can play on the first string here, on this thin E string, that I normally wouldn't be able to play on a chord at the same time as having the open string? I've got that. I've also got the third fret first string. So I could play an arpeggio where I go. Third fret. Now, why does the third fret work? Because it's the it's the fifth of C. So if if you find a note that's the one, three, or five of a key, it's it can be included in a major arpeggio. So I would have one, three, five, one, three, five. Back down. Five. Sorry. Five. about going below five three five one sometimes I I've got some students and they we for, we all forget about the bass notes that's an arpeggio note that's a arpeggio note that's a chord tone of the third fifth root here we go it's one of the first things a lot of instrumentalists will learn right because um, especially if you don't play guitar or piano what do you have you have one note at a time. So how crucial is it to play a chord one note at a time when you play violin or when you play trumpet? It's pretty crucial, right? So they might sit there and they might think, okay. They have to play one note at a time in order to play a C major chord. So just because we can play all notes at the same time doesn't mean we should ignore that, right? We should take that seriously and basically learn arpeggios. So why don't I demonstrate a little bit, if I said I'm gonna play C major all over the neck, okay? This is something I'm not asking you to do right away. It takes time, but I'm gonna play C major arpeggio all over the neck and see what it looks like and see what it sounds like. We'll start with open position. Here we go, A position. G position, E position, D position, C position, a little faster. So, basically I just played the C major chord tones, one, three, five, all over the neck as an exercise, all right? Now, um, okay, so that's major. All right, any questions about that? An arpeggio is basically a chord note for note. Um, go ahead and check out the Patreon if you haven't already. And uh, join for the lowest level if you if you be so kind. I've got about 60 tabs up there. We've just hit 50 members, and uh, I'm going to post more and more theory stuff there, in the form of tabs, in the form of PDFs. So check that out if you if you wouldn't mind. Um, so that's that's major. Let's play another song and then let's talk more. Um, let's just kind of piecemeal this together. I'll play another original called Sinking In. The 
This is off my first album, Amazing Grace, which you can find the link in the description below. It's on Apple Music and Spotify and YouTube. So it's called Sinking In. It's one of the first songs I wrote when I was probably 18 or 19. So, got a question here. Is there a way to smoothly connect them to improvise up and down the neck? Absolutely. Um, good question here. Is there a way to, to sort of smoothly connect these arpeggios up and down the fretboard? Um, yeah, so as we, as some of us know, there are five shapes to the uh, to the to the neck, right? That's why we say caged. And you know, that's that's something that can be a little bit daunting if we want want to really connect all those five shapes. 
let's go on to let's say I'm in a minor um, and I want to connect all these okay so let, let, let's move into that really good question funny Manric too let's let's really dive into some some secrets about guitar because if i want to play say an a minor arpeggio not a minor seven nothing fancy just one flat three five of a minor there's a really cool thing we can do let me show it to you first and then i'll explain what i'm doing all right oops see that so what I did is I took the fretboard and I said, you know what? The heck with shapes. We, we get it. We get that there's, here's the, the A, the E minor shape, the pentatonic shape that everyone loves. But maybe I don't want to just sit here and just go. That would be an A minor arpeggio in, in just the E minor shape. But, you know, that's only covering three frets of the entire fretboard. So what I can do is, is I can say, I'm going to um, keep in mind the shape of the octave, all right? Meaning I'm going to do one flat three five. And my one, my root, my A was on the index finger. My flat three was three frets up, as it always is. And the five was on the next string, two frets over. That's just the shape of a A minor arpeggio in terms of the index finger being the root. Nothing we can do about that but but understand it, right? Now, why don't I just repeat that up the neck? So now I'm going to put the root here. So instead of putting the root on the third finger like we have with an A minor or pentatonic scale, I'm just going to have this sort of um, sem um, symmetry in the neck. One, flat, three, five. Now, one on the index, flat three, five. Let's do it again. One right on the on the index, flat three, five. When I when I learned that, that was mind blowing. I was like, oh my goodness. You don't have to just, you know, stick to a shape. You can just You can move, you can say the index finger is the king or the queen, whatever. In this scenario, we're going to keep the index finger on the root, no matter what. I don't care what string it is. Then you could have the same riff octave after octave. What if I wanted to do that with major? Let's say I wanted to do that with G major. Here's a G major. Here's an e, uh, e shaped bar chord of G major. Here's one, three, five. Now I'm going to do that up the octaves. Ah. Connecting, I'm connecting some of these shapes together. So does that kind of answer your question? Is that uh, if we take the octave and we move it up and down the fretboard, we can basically connect these shapes. One, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. One, three, one, three, five, one, three, five. Okay. So let me know if that makes sense. Hit the thumbs up and uh, and uh, make sure to subscribe. What lessons are you guys learning right now? Uh, what videos are you watching of mine?
Yeah, it is. Yeah, George has a good point. It feels like more fun than one shape. Kind of is, because one shape can feel a little bit limiting, right? And, and, and sometimes if we're in one shape, it's like, okay, you know, kind of want to break free, right? Um, music is about moving around and, and, and getting getting comfortable with the neck and so um, yeah just try that try putting the root on one finger whether it's the, the index finger or the middle finger yeah good good all right so if we have a minor arpeggio it would be one flat three five that beer on the side is making me thirsty I'm off to get mine from the fridge there you go so I'm having a nice little IPA it's been a long week of, of teaching and working, um, so it's always nice to have these live streams and kind of unwind with a beer. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> so you'd have major and minor, one, three, five, one, flat, three, five. Okay. Do you guys want to go further? You want to dive a little deeper? I mean, there's so much to cover with arpeggios. Um, so let's cover sevenths. So if we think about the difference between an arpeggio and a scale, because they're both single notes, Long Island iced tea. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. There we go. Good. So if we think about the difference between a scale and an arpeggio, if I play, if I play an A minor scale I've got seven notes the diatonic scale now if I play the A minor pentatonic scale I've got five notes one flat three four five flat seven that's five notes right there then it repeats and I always like to start with my students with knowing what with starting with what they know so if you already know an A minor pentatonic maybe it's useful to start from there if an A minor 7 arpeggio has four notes that means it's just one less note from an A, from a pentatonic scale so the pentatonic scale has one flat three four five flat seven guess what an A minor 7 arpeggio has one flat three five flat seven so we just take out the four and all of a sudden guess what we have a minor seven arpeggio I've taken out the four which is here don't need the four the four is not really part of an A minor seven chord here's an A minor seven chord one flat three five flat seven one flat three five flat seven one flat three all over the neck now I've reached 12 frets up so if I put on you know I mean really what if, if I were to, to recommend something that you can actually really benefit from it's putting on a metronome I know it's it seems sometimes it seems a little bit uh, tedious right but if I put on a metronome let's say 100 BPM okay I'm using pro metronome now I can actually practice these things in a way that's a little more structured flat three five and flat seven then I can speed it up if I want to okay so that's that's a static exercise meaning it's just one chord what happens if we want to now do a chord progression has anybody ever heard the term blowing the changes any jazz musicians out there any saxophone players trumpet players trombone Okay, so if you go to 
If you study jazz in college, you'll hear the term blowing the changes. And this is what's what saxophone players and horn players will do when basically they can't play chords, right? They don't play guitar, they don't play piano. But, you know, they're studying jazz, which is very complex. So how are they going to do that? Well, they're going to do it by basically playing arpeggios over tunes, over songs. So could be any song, could be uh, summertime or you know all the things you are or autumn leaves whatever and they'll just basically do that so that's how they practice chord progressions so they might uh, autumn leaves that's the melody but that's not enough right they need to practice the chords so they might think okay I'm gonna practice an A minor 7 to D7 G major 7, C major 7, F minor 7 sharp 5, B7, E minor, E7, A minor 7, D7. Okay, that's what they'll do. And they'll do that for hours, and then they'll, then somebody plays out of leaves, and they're just like, you know... That's how they get good, right? Is basically playing arpeggios. So let's learn from horn players and think, okay, why don't I take a song I know? Any song you know, it doesn't have to be jazz. In fact, it's probably better if it's not because most of my subscribers are not jazz players. Take any song you know and quote, blow the changes. All right, so can we think of a tune that I can demonstrate that on? Um, why don't we do something really easy? You guys know Knocking on Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan? All right, I'll just, in case you don't know it, it's G, D, A minor 7. Nice beginner slide. I need to teach this soon. G, second time it goes to the C. Now, if I wanted to, quote, blow the changes, like a, like a, like a horn player would do, I can simply, all over the neck, play these four chords in single note arpeggios because I might you know it's not enough to just well it is enough to play the chords but it's it's like why not go a little bit further right so maybe I maybe I loop the progression maybe I just have the progression in my mind and I'm gonna play I'm gonna quote blow the changes over knocking on heaven's door G D a minor 7 all right so Nice and slow. G, D, C, G, D, A minor 7, G, D, C. Now let's say I get, I get the idea. Ah. playing I'm playing a one three five only all over the neck G D a minor 7 G D C G D a minor 7 G D C what if I wanted to add a seventh I can do G major 7 D dominant 7 and, and a minor 7 7 C major 7 and then if I get really comfortable with that over all five positions what happens is you can basically 
just connect the dots and start and start going crazy. Um, so, you know, by 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 that, what I, what I mean by that is, let's say I want to throw in some G major pentatonic. You know, A minor pentatonic. I've already mapped out all the arpeggios. It's pretty it's pretty powerful. So now I can say A minor pentatonic. G major pentatonic, D major pentatonic, A minor. See, because I've already mapped out the chord tones. So it's like a starting place. It's like saying, you know, all on all 24 frets of the guitar there are the chord tones one three five of each chord so i have g knock knock d heavens a minor seven a minor seven up and down g knock knock d c major seven knock 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 on heaven's door Meaning, use songs to your benefit. This song is guiding me. It's almost like I'm not even playing guitar, it's playing me. The song is guiding me to where to go. I'm not really breaking the rules, I'm only following the chords as they appear in the song. Um, which is a little more exciting than just saying, okay, I'm just going to play G major 7 arpeggio. Okay. After a while, you'll probably get a little bored of that, and then you want to play a song, right? So hopefully that makes sense. It's like, because I know all five shapes of every chord, it's easy for me to just say, yeah, go ahead and do it. But these things take time, so you want to build up those those skills to where you can play all the chords and all the shapes. All right, good choice. Thank you. Good. I'm glad. Hey there, Alia. Yeah. You've helped me open my eyes and ears. This helps with playing along with songs we know and songs we don't know. Absolutely. I'm glad. That's the goal. So, you know, that's the goal is just to really... It's not like, you know, you don't really need to reinvent the wheel to learn theory. You don't need to abandon the stuff you know. Start with the songs you know. And, you know, if I, like the first song I ever learned was Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. So if I want to do that song, I've got four chords. I've got G, C, D, and A minor. So, you know, I don't need to get crazy. I can just simply do that. Let's take some bar chord forms. So, so you think you can tell. Heaven from hell, blue skies from pain. So I've got a five fret area from third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Third to seven here. And I can just do these arpeggios. So, so you think. from pain tell a green feel from a cold steel rail ah sorry do you hear the song still from hell blue skies from pain just crawling up that neck alright 
Got a good question here. Can you use bends and arpeggios? Yeah, um, not traditionally, but yes, you can. You can bend to the note. So if I want to play a, a G major arpeggio, I could do bend to the five. One, three, four. So yeah, you can use bends and arpeggios. So arpeggios are basically a little bit, a little bit, a little bit straight, right? It's like one, three, five. But then you, you, you want to inter, intersperse that in with more pentatonic stuff where you can bend a little more often. So uh, I think I'm going to keep this um, more brief. So um, please check out the Patreon and. Um, you know, let's get to a hundred people. We've got, we just had 50, uh, hit, hit number 50 yesterday. And uh, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you know, leave your leave your comments and, and requests. And uh, yeah, I've just had such a busy month, so I, I, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm, things are calming down a little bit so I can get back to the channel more. All right, All right good question from George. Any quit any any lessons on how to pick out a melody on a song? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it has to do with ear training and music theory, and it has to do with understanding your scales. So for now, just keep working on your major scales, and notice the scale scale degrees one through seven, and then we'll kind of cover how to how to pick that out. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing lessons on that. Great, thanks Alia, yeah, and thanks Pete. So, why don't I do one more song? But, you know, I don't wanna to go too crazy on arpeggios for now, I just wanna recommend, go over a song, if I had some homework for you, and to basically go over a song you know and play one note at a time, one, three, five. If you need to start with the open position, that's fine, but maybe go through the five positions of caged and you know these 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 things take months if not longer so try that and just see see if you can hear the song while you're doing it that's really the key it's kind of powerful when you can and you're playing single notes and you can hear a chord progression all right that's the goal so that will be my homework for you make sure to subscribe hit the hit the thumbs up uh let's do um I'll do another original. I'm just I'm trying to do more originals on these streams because they they like to demonetize it if I don't, which I don't really care about. But might as well, you know, collect that few pennies. Um, what's the most eerie arpeggio you know? <laughs> eerie. Well, diminish is always a, is always a good choice. One flat three flat five. 13 or how about the augmented sharp 5 it's called symmetrical scale hi seeing this stream has inspired me to pick up my crappy model to practice scales thanks for hosting oh thank you thank you good I'm glad all right, so why don't I play, um, what was he going to play? Uh, Help Me Out, which will be the first song on an album. I'm going to record this summer. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's been, it's been about two years that I've written this album, but I need to really get it recorded. So here this is called Help Me Out. Thanks for joining, and uh, keep watching the videos if you, if you wouldn't mind, and commenting and supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. <laughs> By design, life is intended to make you cry. Cause something good's got so little time. Now I want you, but I find it difficult to tell you the truth. But you are the cure for.
heart is racing Side effects of the love and wait But I'm still grateful for the time we're taking In the language we speak Words don't compare to the moments we share So I choke up and get weak in the knees So Lord help me We walked up the cliff, seeing so clearly even in the mist that the fog would burn and the sun would lift. Our eyes did the talking. I was just a fool having trouble keeping cool. But that all changed and now the world is new. Okay. Yeah, the little licks in between, yeah. Listen to this on the highway. All right. Did you go to music college? You're good at music theory. Yes, I, uh, I just completed my doctorate in music, actually, at USC. So I got a double degree in undergrad in jazz performance and applied composition. Then I got a master's in studio jazz guitar, and I just finished my doctorate of music girl lives out of town I'm itching to get to her in time <laughs> okay Alia Bravo thanks everybody so thank you um, and you know I always I always really enjoy connecting with you all and I'm just uh, I'm just so grateful to have such great supporters and uh, such a great you know such a great interaction with you all so uh, I'm grateful for that is my favorite jazz? Not necessarily. I love jazz to death. I love it to death. But um, my favorite is is uh, a little more bit, uh, a little more like rock, uh, folk, alternative, um, hip hop, bluegrass, jazz. It's 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 like jazz is one of many things I love. I love flamenco and West African music. So I'm kind of a little bit all over the map, but if, you, if you're interested in what I like, check out my last albums. Uh, you can find my link for my website at mitchellthomasmusic.com. And I've got two albums out, Airplane and Amazing Grace. Uh, Amazing Grace was 2004, so 17 years ago, but that was my hip hop days. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I actually, I'm a professional musician, so I gig all the time. Um, I'm in four bands right now, and I play gigs most weekends. So yeah, to answer your question there, uh, I did play a lot more before uh, before the lockdown, but now things are starting to open up, so I'm playing again. Anyway, um, yeah, you can check out my other YouTube channel in the description below or my website. You can also check out the Patreon. I'm glad you guys liked it. Thank you so much for these wonderful comments here for uh, supporting my music. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like I'm hoping to answer your questions, right? So let me know what you guys want to learn next live stream. Come with your questions and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. So have a good day, everybody. Wonderful to see you. 
Uh, thanks for all your support. It really warms my heart. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy, happy practicing. Rock on.